So the 1970s was a year weird junk food phenomena. Uh, chips became uh, more prevalent, different brands, snack cakes, and pop uh, became better value from the six and, and ten and twelve ounce bottles to their seven hundred fifty milliliter, one point five liter, and two liter bottles. But a problem came along with the pop production, exploding pop bottles. I kid you not. In the late 1970s, this came to major prominence mainly because uh, of a CBC Marketplace uh, report. Now, at the time, Marketplace was the uh, the big, uh, what they call, consumer show that was seen by more than a million uh, people a week. Now, they were getting various reports in the Maritimes in Ontario uh, that soft drinks in these type of bottles, especially the sugar-filled drinks, like the 7-Up uh, Coke and Pepsi product, had a tendency to explode when tipped over. Now, before plastic bottles came into use, glass was the most common container. And when they tipped over, 1.5 liter glass bottles had a nasty tendency not just to break, but to shred, send uh, shreds uh, flying. Now, CBC Marketplace in the classic episode showed exactly what happens when a pop bottle is being tipped over. At the time, it wasn't a two liter or one liter configuration we have now, the what they call the perfect vertical. It would be 90% vertical with almost like a, um, uh, a bomb tip on the top. Now, uh, David Barnum in the demonstration on CBC's The National for Marketplace, he said, I'm going to take the bottle and it's going to tip it over. Justin might actually do it at home and at the grocery stores. Now, after putting on safety glasses and placing the bottle in a specially constructed cabinet with transparent walls, Barnum asked reporter Joan Watson to back away. Then, using light pressure with his fingertip, he gingerly pushed over the unlabeled bottle full of the brown liquid, and Joan said it literally exploded. Sharp fragments were embedded in one sided container made of wood. Uh, now, Barham, a professor at the University of Toronto, said he had conducted the same test on 40 or 50 bottles of different types of pop, and every last one broke. For good measure, he tried a few more with Watson present during the marketplace uh, taping. Brand after brand shattered included Wilson, 7-Up, Hires, Root Beer, Schweppes, and on the second try, uh, and Pepsi. Now, one and a half uh, liter Coke didn't break, though to Watson, a different shape, and I, I know that for a fact. We had an incident at our local co-op where a uh, 1.5 liter of Pepsi literally exploded like a gun going off and shocked everybody in the store. Now, the, a lot of people felt it started in the late 70s where the configuration of the bottle was getting, uh, what do you call, uh, lazy, uh, and uh, improvements needed to be made. Now, after Barham reported his findings to the federal government's product safety division, they had tested the bottles themselves with much the same result, Watson said. Now, a meeting was uh, pending at the time to ponder the problem, and in the meantime, the reporter said, take care. Now, way after eight days after CBC report, uh, of all people, Anne Murray had become the victim of such a defective bottle that she said went off like a bomb. Uh, Murray's spokesman said she's now walking on crutches with stitches on one foot. Now, by the end of the summer of 79, the bottles had been ordered off grocery sales, and 50,000 cases of them from the Toronto area alone were piled up with no way to go. Nationwide, the returnable bottles and the cases they fit in represented at the time a $46 million investment to the soft drink industry, according to CBC reporter Michael Vaughn. Now, Coca-Cola head office telling his bottles across the country to complain to the MPs. Now, at the time, there was local bottling uh, groups throughout Canada, not like now it was mass produced into two liters. Now, soft drink makers at the time were hoping the Federal Consumer Affairs Minister Alan Lawrence would withdraw the ban, but it seems to be an alternative to jagged uh, bits of glass flying three meters or more. Now, an independent uh, Toronto company eventually devised a way to make the bottle safer, not by preventing breakage, but by mitigating the explosive nature of it. With a protective coating, a bottle falling off a table would break, but not shatter. Now, the label played a big factor in this improvement, too, because as you see in these pictures, you had uh, paper uh, labels that were glued on at the top and the bottom. Now, uh, the labels did play a factor in stopping the explosion, but there was no consistency with the type of bottles. 7-Ups were a little bit different. They were using old bottles from the early 70s. The more modern bottles would not uh, break, but he's saying that the pressurization within the bottles uh, played a factor. Now, 
at the time, uh, uh, David Seale, Vice President of Coca-Cola, wasn't interested in the improvements, although he agreed to work in the demonstration at scene. Uh, at this point in time, he said it's done by hand with a paintbrush. We need something that's efficient, available, practical, and workable, not something that's still a theory. Now, the creators of the coding said they probably achieved what it aimed to do, and that they were able to set up a high volume process in a number of months. Now, by the early 80s, plastic became more in vogue. They weren't using pure glass anymore. It was non recyclable glass bottles, which were a thicker. Uh, I call them, if you ever watch the grassy uh, High and see the uh, bottles of Coke that uh, Joey and uh, his cohorts were drinking, drinking on a regular basis, those would not break. But how it worked back then, the 750 milliliter bottles, each one was a little bit different. The configuration was different, but the pressurization and the added sugar content which was in a lot of these products and added carbonation. Pop was used to go flat before, but the pop would be on the shelves longer, more durable, and because there were more grocery stores by the late 70s, early 80s, you had what you call your pop aisle, and if you didn't stack it correctly, and the way it was configured, if a person was going to uh, show off and push one over, definitely was going to explode. But by the mid-1980s, it went away. But it was a time, ladies and gentlemen, two or three years. Like, it was dangerous going to pop aisle because there was no guarantee that the bottles you were buying weren't going to explode. And like I said, it was like uh, the Coke bottles especially. They were made like a missile. It wasn't like pure two liters like you see now. I, I wish I could uh, take you back in time. And like I said, the pop back then tasted great. Great carbonation, uh, very flavorful. But like I said, you had to be careful, right? So uh, it's like anything else. See, that wouldn't happen with beer and stubbies because beer and the quartz were a different configuration all the time. But that was the era. There was an era in Canada the most danger you found at a grocery store was not from bad meat. It was from bad pop bottles. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing here with our historical podcast, let us know with a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're going into DeLorean this week to get a pop back in 1978, uh, you know, uh, be careful. Have a good day. Bye.